Hey everybody, welcome back to the Screencast Lecture Series, the Theory of Plate Tectonics. Today we're going to do part two, and this one is about convergent boundaries. Now, before we get into the new convergent boundary talk, let's have a quick review about and a very a couple of very very important concepts from the previous lecture. The first thing is is what are the two types of crust? Do you remember the two types of crust? I remember the U. I believe so. Let's find out. Now the first type is oceanic, and obviously this is going to be the type of crust that's found under the ocean. And then next is continental, and that's where we live. That's dry land. And if you remember a couple things about oceanic, oceanic is going to be more dense and thinner, and continental is going to be much, much thicker and much less dense. Those are two key concepts that you really need to remember. Now, the first plate boundary type, the kind of the type, the boundary type that we talked about last time, do you remember the uh, name of that? What type of boundary oceanic? was it? Oceanic? No, it wasn't oceanic. It was divergent boundary. This is when two or more plates move apart. Did you get that one right? No, you didn't get that right because you got it wrong. Did you get that right? You yeah. did. You did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. Yay! Oh, we steam up. We did it. <laughs> Plates moving together is called convergent boundary, and the prefix con means with or together, so we're moving together, convergent boundary. This is the divergent boundary where the plates are moving apart. Locations and examples of convergent boundaries would be here, the Nazca plate going towards the South America plate, that, and another example is the Australian plate, going into the Pacific plate. There's three types of convergent boundaries. It's going to depend on what type of crust we're dealing with, either oceanic or continental, which is going to determine what's going to happen at these convergent boundaries. Now the first type is when you have one oceanic and one continental plate colliding. So here you have the thin, dense oceanic plate, and here you have the thick, much less dense continental plate colliding. So you, you could think about it like this. Here is the continental plate on your right. Here is the thin oceanic plate on your left coming together. The thin oceanic plate is going to be pushed down, and the less dense continental plate is going to go over the thin, dense oceanic plate. The oceanic plate gets subducted. That means it gets pushed under the continental crust. As you can see, it gets pushed under. That's called subducted. As you know, the prefix sub means under, like submarine, and that means it gets pushed under the more thick, less dense continental crust right here. This is subduction. The ocean. It's really important that you have an understanding of this. That's why I was telling you before in the last lesson why it's important to know the difference between the two types of crust, oceanic and continental, because they're going to behave diff very differently, and you're going to get some different results in terms of geological features depending on what kind of crust you have, oceanic or continental. Here you see at this convergent boundary, at this subduction zone, you're going to get mountains of volcanoes forming on the continental plate. Because here you have the oceanic plate getting subducted. As it goes down, it gets hotter and hotter. What happens to this rock down here? Correct, it's going to melt. So you're going to melt and get more magma. And there, there's going to be a pressure build up here. And this lava magma pressure is going to push up and it's going to make this crust rise up and form mountains. Examples, Andes Mountains in South America is a great example. Here you can see this mountain chain, the Andes mountain chain. This is all formed here. This is a subduction zone right here. And all these mountains get formed by that subduction zone. A, very, a trench will also form between these two plates at a subduction zone. You're going to have here right now, this is called the Peru-Chile Trench. 
and that's right off the coast of South America. That's where this uh, oceanic plate gets subducted down underneath the continental crust. Here you can see a aerial shot of the Pacific Ocean with the Peru-Chile Trench. Here's again the Nazca plate is getting subducted underneath the South American plate as they converge on one another. And one of the features that you're going to notice at this convergent boundary, you're going to start to see a lot of volcanoes. And here you see lava pressure building up here, and that's going to bring magma and lava very close to the surface, and that's going to encourage the formations of volcanoes. Now that's the first type where you had oceanic versus continental. Now the second type is going to be here. This is going to be when you have two oceanic plates colliding. So we have oceanic versus oceanic. So now we have two dense thin plates that are going to be colliding. What do you think is going to happen if the two dense plates are going to be colliding? And this is occurring right off the coast of Japan. And what happens then is you have both plates will get subducted. So both plates, oceanic plates, both very dense, both thin, both get subducted. And there you're going to find another oceanic trench forming like the Japan Trench right off the eastern coast of Japan. One of the things to look for off the coast of Japan would be many volcanoes, many earthquakes. Here's that Japan Trench right here. So you have the Pacific Plate. It's going towards the Okinawa Plate here. And you have a lot of activity, a lot of action going on there. At these convergent boundaries to oceanic plates, again, expect volcanoes, expect earthquakes. Here you see a photo of the ocean trench right off the coast of Japan. And again, for something like this, you normally need a special submersible to go down very, very deep as the pressure increases with depth. So we got two of these down. Here we had oceanic plate versus continental plate. Here we have oceanic versus oceanic. And of course, we're left now with continental versus continental. So this is when you have two continental plates colliding. And here you want to see the thick continental crust versus thick continental crust. And they are going to be going towards each other. Neither one of these is going to get subducted. It's just too thick. Both of them are less dense. You're not going to get much, if any, subduction at this point. So you're going to get the continental crust pushing up against each other, and it's going to rise, and you're going to get great big mountains forming at this location. A great example of this happening would be the Himalayan mountains. The Himalayan mountains are going to be right here. This is where the Asian plate is going this direction. The Indian plate is going this direction. They're going to smash into one another, and they're going to form a huge amount of energy, and that's going to be mountain building in this area. That's the Himalayan mountains. Ah! Yeah, these are pretty high. Obviously, you hopefully know that the Himalayan mountains are the tallest in the world. In fact, like Mount Everest is so tall, when you climb it, you actually need to bring your own oxygen, or you're not going to get enough air to breathe, and you're going to pass out. Here's one thing, however, that's different from when you have an oceanic plate colliding with a continental plate, or an oceanic and oce versus oceanic. You should not expect volcanoes here, since there's very little subduction, so you're not going to get a lot of that rock uh, melting into new magma and you're not going to get that additional pressure from underneath causing volcanoes. Let's make a list of geologic features that we should expect at a convergent boundary. Feature number one, ocean trenches. If we have at least one oceanic plate, we are going to get ocean trenches. In this area, you have convergence, and here you get a trench. 
The most famous trench of all is the Mariana Trench, and this is the deepest part of the ocean anywhere you can find, close to seven miles deep. Here's a pretty amazing diagram, I think, if you take a look at this. This is a diagram showing the Mariana Trench and just how big it is, how deep it is. Next feature we want to make sure we make a note of is volcanoes. Volcanoes should definitely be expected at convergent boundaries, except where you have two continental plates meeting. Here you have an oceanic plate converging and being subducted underneath a continental plate. The oceanic plate melts and forms magma, increases pressure underneath the continental plate, and the magma is comes up and forms a volcano. Here you can see the map of South America. All these red dots, these represent volcanoes. You can see them all along the plate boundaries. Here you see a satellite photo of a volcano in the Andes Mountains. Oh no, a volcano! Ah! Check this out. This is a map of the Pacific Ocean. And there are so many volcanoes in this area that it has come to be known as the Ring of Fire. And here you can see these red dots. Each of these red dots represents a volcano. And you can just see the tremendous amount that go along this Pacific Plate. Here's the Pacific Plate right here, surrounded by volcanoes. The area surrounding the Pacific Ocean. There are many subduction zones, volcanoes, and earthquakes. Just about 90% of the world's earthquakes occur here in this area. And roughly 75% of the world's active and dormant volcanoes will be found at the Ring of Fire. Mountain building should be expected as long as you have at least one continental plate converging with another plate. And if you take a look at this map, you can definitely see mountains in this area where there's convergent boundaries. You have mountains in this area with convergent. You're commonly going to find earthquakes. Here we go. These dots represent earthquakes. As they get larger, as the, the dot gets larger and more to the red, these are larger earthquakes. So let's take a look at our friend, the Ring of Fire. Earthquake, 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 all the way around. Earthquake, and you can see very large earthquakes in this area. Here you have where the uh, Indian plate is smashing into the Eurasian plate. The Himalayan Mountains, definitely an area of high earthquake activity. India often, unfortunately, gets hit with some pretty bad earthquakes. Here's Japan, just you can't even see Japan at all. It's just so many different earthquakes have occurred in this area. And speaking of Japan, in 2011, there was a big earthquake under the ocean and a tsunami hit the island of Japan. And you can see some of the devastation here. It was very, very bad. And a nuclear power plant was damaged and radioactive material escaped. It was a really big deal. I think I've read and seen Japan really did an amazing job in dealing with the devastation of the earthquake and the tsunami. And Japan has plans in, in for the people to uh, be prepared. I mean, they have earthquake drills and things like that. It's really pretty impressive how well they can deal with such a bad situation. What will happen in Maranouchi in the event of a major earthquake? When a big earthquake strikes, people first take shelter under desks to protect themselves. After the tremor stops, Mitsubishi Estate will mobilize the emergency disaster system. Temporary first aid stations will be set up, and injured people have the option to be treated in English in cooperation with hospitals in the district. Those who have difficulty returning home due to disruptions to transportation networks can have access to emergency rations and temporary shelter. And disaster drills have been carried out every year since 1926. Today, comprehensive countermeasures have become firmly established with the cooperation of the government and the local community. Yeah, you know there's a lot of power when 
you can pick up a boat and put it on top of a building. Okay, the next thing I need you to do is to click on this link. This will get you to the song made by us. This is the uh, Play Tectonics Convergent Boundary song. So watch it. It will definitely help you. There's a lot of good information on there, and I hope you enjoy it. And make a comment, like it, subscribe if you haven't already. Well, we hope you enjoyed the song, and I hope you learned something from today's screencast lecture. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. See ya. Be careful, kids. Bye. 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 Four. Bye. 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 Yay. Hey, I don't cover my face. It's beautiful. Everybody wants to see my beautiful face. Oh, no. What? Where's the stop? Where's the stop button? I can't find the stop button. There it is.